In this video, we are going to dive into the world of color gels by Savilland, which completely changed my mind of affordable color gels, because they can be used not only for nail art, but also for one color application. Coming up! Hello guys, this is Anastasia, let's open up the kit by Savilland. Wow, we have not only gels here, but also a kit of nail art brushes. Detailer, fan and small square brushes are included as well as one small dotting tool. But I cannot wait to see the gels. We have 36 pots right here and by the color on the top I can already tell the colors are going to be bright mostly. Let's open it up, every pot has this protective metallic seal. When I'm opening this membrane, it's very important so the pot will stay clean and... Oh man, it didn't work this time. Oh well, I will just take it off this part later because, you know, I just like it when it's smooth. The consistency is medium thin, which means we can easily use it as one tone color and let's try it. Number 11 is white, so I think white is one of the best colors to give a first test. I'm using a clear tip. And also I'm using a gel brush, because all the brushes in the kit are for nail art, so you will need to use a separate brush if you want to use it as the color. Take a look at this coverage, wow! One coat, white color, and it's completely bright and covered. Let's try something dark then. Number 18, this is dark brown color. Once again, I'm going to apply just one coat on top of the clear. The consistency is much thicker than consistency of traditional gel polishes in the bottle and that makes it very comfortable to apply, but on the other hand, it's not extremely thick. You can see it by looking at the pot, it self-levels at some point, so you do not need to worry about having brush strokes on the top. Let's try all the colors, so we have so many bright colors here, as well as basic colors such as red, dark green, dark brown purple, yellow, and so much more. Only cream colors are included, so there are no glitter or semi-transparent colors. All of them have excellent coverage in just one coat, even the yellow one. They also have some kind of beige and classic red color, and this is the entire collection. Black and white are included also, so I would say this is a great collection to start with if you do not have any gel colors yet. Let's do the nails. This is my client's standard nails, nothing special, and we didn't have much time. She needed to pick up her kids from the school soon, so we decided to make it quick and do soft gel extensions. First, I'm going to push back the cuticles with the orange wood stick, and I recommend doing it with the side of the orange wood stick, not the sharp part. Then we proceed to dry manicure. I use diamond flame bit. With red abrasive mark, the speed is 16,000 rotations per minute. Last part of the prep will be trimming the cuticles and aponychium with the scissors. Make sure they are sharp to avoid hangnails. Let's do the prep. I will apply dehydrator and let dry. And then I'm going to apply non-acid primer. I receive many questions from you guys regarding primer. Why do I apply it sometimes only on the free edge? If I'm doing extensions, whether it's soft gel extensions like we're doing now, or hard gel, poly gel, acrylic extensions, I apply primer on the entire nail plate. But if I'm doing just an overlay, usually I apply it only on the free edge because I never had any kind of problems with lifting near the cuticles, if that makes sense. But it's totally up to you, you can always apply it on the entire nail plate. This is just how it works better for me. After we applied non-acid primer, we need a thin coat of the base coat. 
I'm using the one by Cupa. This is one of my favorite base coats. Make sure the coat is thin and that you cure it for 30 seconds. And then we attach soft gel tips. I didn't record much of it, sorry guys, because I was in a hurry. Also, it's not really easy to film it. And also, I have plenty of videos with soft gel extensions tutorials. I will leave the links down below if you would like to see them. Then I buff the nails, which is not necessary, by the way, this is completely optional, but this is also just my thing, probably. I love the look and the feel of freshly buffed nails, and it is easier for me to apply the color close to the cuticle when we have a buffed surface. Let's apply the color. We decided to use this one, number 35, as the background. This is a beige color, and it seems like we will need just one coat. Seriously, I mean, who needs another one? And we're using clear tips too. So one coat completely covers the nail. I definitely cannot see it. And also what I like about this gel is the consistency. It's medium, but it's also thin enough to level up all the brush strokes that you may have after applying it. It's not that thick that it's going to stay there no matter what, so please be aware it still can flood the cuticle or the side walls a little bit, but definitely not as much as traditional gel polishes. Having just one coat instead of two is such a time saver, so I definitely recommend using this kind of product to save your time, because time is money, you know, and this is the application in one coat. I'm taking off the sticky layer because there is a little sticky layer and I'm going to do nail art. I wanted to do this design for such a long time, but every time something went wrong or the client didn't want it and finally I'm doing this camo nails. First we wanted to do some color like pink or purple, but then we just took a glance on this 36 color gel paint kit and realized Come on, man, how can we choose just one color or two or even three? We need to use all of them. So we decided to do every single nail different, but monochrome. So every nail will stay within one part of the color wheel, if you know what I mean. Let's say this one will be yellow, orange and dark red, and another one will include another colors. Keep in mind that this is gel paint kit. So technically these are gel paints. Can we use them as the one color application? Yes, but only on top of extensions. Whether it's a soft gel extensions on tips like I have now, whether it's hard gel, acrylic or poly gel, it's fine. But you cannot use them on natural nails, okay? This is not gel polish. But it works great as you can see for the nail art, so you can use it as the color on top of any kind of extensions, as well as for any kinds of nail art. The consistency allows you to create any kind of abstract design lines, but it is not extremely thick, as you can see. So for super duper tiny, thin, fine lines, this product probably will not work, you will need something thicker. But honestly, from my experience, and I'm doing quite a lot nail art, I would say you will only need to have black and white thicker gel paints, you know, just for the tiny details. For the rest of the colors, usually that's just what you need. For the sake of not making my video three hours long, I'm showing you just some parts of the design, and this is a little bit fast forwarded, but this is how I do them. So I take one nail on one hand, I apply the first color, and while it's curing, I'm applying it on the opposite hand, because we're doing both hands completely the same. Well, I mean, it's not possible to do camo design completely the same, of course, but I'm saying we're using the same colors. So I cure every color, because once I'm applying a new color on the top, the color will go a little bit on it, so it needs to be cured. And since consistency is medium, I do not recommend doing design on one nail, let's say, and proceed to the next one without curing, because it is going to move a little bit. In this kind of design, like camo nails, it does not matter. I mean, if it 
moves if the spots will change their shape it's not that big of a deal but if you will be doing something different where the shape matters it will not be as good you know so it is better to free skew them by the way another great feature of this product that i noticed i used some dark colors for this design and once you apply the dark color thicker than usual there is a possibility that it may wrinkle in the lamp but it did not happen this time even though i was free skewering almost every single nail I think the secret of this kind of designs is to make these spots as crazy as possible. If you will take a look at camo pattern, you will see that they're always different. Some spots are bigger, some spots are smaller, but unlike cow designs where we have a tremendous difference in size, we usually have one huge spot and many smaller ones. Here, most of them are medium size, but they still need to vary in shape. And also do not forget to place some spots closer to the free edge, to the sides, to the cuticle, so it will look like an actual pattern. Because if you will position them only in the center, it is going to look a little weird. Another fun fact about this design, if your hands are shaking or trembling or, for example, at some point I was laughing because this client, by the way, she works in comedy, so obviously she's very good with the jokes. So she told me one joke and I was laughing so hard I just couldn't help it and my hand, it actually moved as I was doing the design. And for this particular design, it was actually a good thing the spot appeared to be even better. All we need to do now is to seal it with a glossy top coat, one coat cure it in LED for 30 seconds and our colorful camo nails are finished. Finally, I did this design. Let me know guys, what do you think? All the links to the products will be as usual in the description below. Thank you so much for watching. If this is your first time here on my channel, consider subscribing as I post new product reviews and tutorials, just like this one every week. See you in my next one. Goodbye!